to the retailers or the one step before where we as end consumers obtain our food and this happened because of a multiple set of reasons as when we compared this with how say the market in the us or other uh, uh, european markets is uh, as mr dr divan was saying i think unlike the farmer holdings in uh, uh, some of these countries like the us in india you have several small small farmers with multiple uh, with small holdings of about a couple of hectares of land and so on similarly on the other side the consumers do not buy from a few large hypermarkets like the walmarts or the tescos or the metros uh, but buy a lot more significantly from the kirana stores or the smaller mom and pop stores right so which means that both at the farmer end as well as the retailer end you have multiple several millions of uh, players in that ecosystem which means that you need a set of aggregation at the farm end of uh, aggregating the material because you cannot have one large truck alone uh, from each farm because the harvest would not be enough to fill a say 20 25 ton of vehicle you will need multiple small vehicles similarly at the retailer end one truck is not going to service the needs of just one retailer uh, you will have to service the needs of multiple smaller retailers so you need a more of a disaggregation happening at that end as well so this is why there are there are aggregations and there's a source market you have multiple transporters uh, if it is not fresh produce you'll have processing milling secondary processing being done then you have a entire wholesale distribution network and then going to the retailers so what is happening as a result in this the supply chain and how is it affecting each of the members of the ecosystem a because there are so many people in the chain and even with the best of efficiencies of them of all these players in the ecosystem just because of the fact that there are so many people in between the remuneration realized by the farmers is lesser and in fact it is often it is one fourth of what the retail price of the end product product is not only is the direct income of each of these players reduced but uh, there also are typical supply chain problems which exist with long supply chains you have limited demand visibility and then there is often uneven supply and volatile prices so it is not that the supplies cannot be matched to the end demand but what is happening is because of the visibility being on and off there is what is typically con- uh, called in the supply chain parlance as a bullwhip effect which exists between the different players so everybody sees the demand or the supply uh, requirements basis one step ahead of them and because of the number of players the the time it takes for the farmer to understand the end retailer's demand situation that actual demand situation at the retailer end would have completely changed this is why we go through repeated cycles whether it's tomatoes onions other products as well apart from of course uh, natural uh, conditions we see a lot of ups and downs i mean you have tomatoes being sold close to 70 80 rupees per kg Uh, and then within four or five months later, the tomato supply is in excess, uh, and the materials then literally being, uh, uh, I mean, either thrown away or wasted. So this is resulting in a 35 percent plus food wastage in the supply chain alone. Right? Just to give again a comparison, US again has the overall 40 percent of food wastage, but there the food wastage happens in the homes or post the retailer. Here the wastage is happening across the supply chain. which is happening because of this visibility not being there and again just to give a size of how uh, much of this wastage is india wastes as much food as is consumed by a country as large as brazil so this is a serious issue which we felt we had to immediately set up and tackle what we therefore did was to introduce an alternative direct supply chain which could be anywhere between 2 to max 5 steps between the farmers or the producers and of course and the b2b customer which is the one step behind before the end consumer so what this ensures is a that first we build the supply chain we design the supply chain which means that there are only four or five members at best and ensure that all of them are sitting on one seamlessly integrated technology platform so all of them see the same single source of truth at any point of time and the planning which has to happen whether it's for the farmer or it's for the processing units or it's for the warehouses or the logistics partners and the distribution etc are all based on this overall visibility of uh, single visibility of truth so the planning is done to attain a global optimum rather than locally optimizing for each step which actually backfires as i explained in the previous steps what therefore happens when you do this 
is and i will talk you talk through the technology a little bit later but as a result of what this happens is the farmers are actually cultivating based on the demand at the time of harvesting and not based on the demand which they feel at this point of time they are also therefore being able to use multiple regenerative and other efficient agricultural practices where we also provide advisory services to help them plan plan the cultivation as well as the imports etc in such a way that they grow based on and in, ensure that the yield is maximized and the yield is maximized and available for harvest at a time when the actual demand is there and therefore the price stability is there all of this ensures that the farmers gain up to we have seen independent audits give, giving farmers anywhere from 30 to 40% uh, uptick in their revenues and much higher uptick in their overall profits uh, as a result of this the processing centers and the warehouses also therefore are able to plan properly they also utilize their by products significantly for example uh, in the mill, mills which we work with for processing of the dals the the full dals the polished dals is of course sold as dals itself the broken dals is used to make more processed foods like idli and dosa batter etc so those dals are not getting um, uh, through, are not getting thrown away or so similarly because the planning is in shape and then all of the, the network is tight you have superior quality output as well and you ensure that there is enough value addition the warehouses are also again able to, uh, are have are highly automated and are able to work towards a plan to ensure that the supply is mapped to the right demand where you have your ai ml algorithms working and ensure that there is minimal physical touch of the uh, produce which is happening and as a result there is less chance of rot or wastage especially in uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, the retailers are also benefiting because you are able to provide uh, close to 100% fill rates and therefore the consumers are able to get the products which they want how do we manage this from a technology systems perspective what we have built is one integrated background of course sitting on an accounting system with four independent uh, large modules for the different ecosystem players my farm is our ecosystem for the farmers rapid is our ecosystem for the processing and the warehouse units garuda is our is a platform for the distribution network both on the sales side as well as on the logistics and the last mile fulfillment side and of course the retailer uh, network itself and i'll talk through how the whole process works from actually right to left rather than left to right so the retailers have a sign up platform where they actually not only are able, are able to place orders but we actually provide recommendations based on the consumptions of the consumers in terms of not only what products they should stock but how much they should stock so that there is limited wastage and this uh, in addition to that we also provide them with uh, lending platforms uh, connect uh, it's a digital lending marketplace provided to them connected with multiple financiers which provides them seamless credit to be able to smoothly run this uh, engine as well so we assist the retailers with credit and other kinds of services but most importantly ensure that they order produce which is in line with what the consumer behavior is going to be and that's based on our rich data which we have from more than uh, 1 lakh uh, retailers and then their subsequent consumers over the last several years so in addition to this we also have sales executives who are provided with uh, garuda solution where there is again merchandising advisory recommendation which is provided directly to the sales executives which through which the sales executives are able to not just talk the right amount of quantities of different products with the retail units but are also able to again uh, help the convince the retailers and help them understand how much of each of the produce has to be taken whether the orders are taken by the sales executives or by the consumers directly all of that feeds into a forecasting engine uh, which uh, uh, which runs based on the, it's an ai ml engine which uses the data of the last 3 to 4 years and therefore plans the amount uh, does the demand forecast so today the demand will be forecast for what will be the requirements of the fresh produce same two days from today which is on wednesday and this forecast uh, apart from this uh, short term forecast we also forecast a 90 to 120 days out which is a more long term forecast the 90 to 120 days out forecast is used for crop cultivation planning by our uh, dedicated contracted farmers who cultivate their uh, land in a phased manner based on this 90 to 120 days out long term forecast 
and on the other hand the short term forecast is used for uh, buying the remaining materials from the farmers on a shorter notice so this uh, forecasting goes to the farmers for the long term forecast farmers we are as i said also provide various levels of farm advisory and packages of practices ranging all the way from the right input recommendations the seed recommendations um disease uh, and prediction and disease management uh, different uh, helping them um, optimize the use of uh, irrigation and uh, other inputs through our uh, smart iot systems uh, and also then provide them not only the input driven uh, uh, i mean uh, pr practices but also provide them the full understanding of how the market is how the mandi prices are how the prediction of the prices are to help them with their uh, when to harvest as well as when to provide the material the material then from the farms goes into our uh, uh, processing units if it is staples uh, or if it goes directly into our automated warehouses the automated warehouses have a supply demand uh, algorithm which is uh, mapped on top of a iot based decision conveyor systems so what happens is there's only once the crate is identified uh, is uh, logged into a system it is tracked from there it is uh, put onto the decision conveyor system our matching algorithm automatically maps uh, maps it to a end consumer and the decision conveyor systems automatically pushes the crates to the end consumer why this is uh, helpful is as a result of this there is no physical touch of any material there is no movement of material from one crate to another and therefore there is again limited chance of rotting of uh, the fresh produce happening because of the uh, touch which is happening not uh, not only this this while the material is getting allocated this uh, immediately are the logistics side which is part again of the garuda system the logistics engine st uh, starts get, gets triggered and starts doing the route optimization it optimizes the routes to ensure that the uh, material is provided to the end consumer in the shortest time but at the optimized cost again to ensure that the material reaches the consumer as quickly as possible because of this full process from harvest to end consumer it takes as little as 4 hours for uh, produce as uh, like leafy uh, leafies and exotics and maximum except for fruit, uh, uh, onions and potatoes for uh, all fruits and vegetables more than 90 80% of the produce from harvest to the end consumer is reached within 24 hours uh, even though they may be in a very different state or a different uh, re region in the country so that is happening because all these four pieces are working very closely with each other and ad in addition to that they are all tied up with different units also for intelligence coming in for example our entire farm ecosystem platform my farm is connected to both our own proprietary iot systems on irrigation and um, other resource management but also other smart and precision farming equipment of different players as well the rapid solution which is on the processing warehouse automation is convert is connected to a whole network of iot sensors uh, and systems uh, to ensure that uh, the movement is Uh, so that, that, that software technology need not be used just for our warehouse system but can be used uh, across the globe as well similarly we our uh, entire distribution network is connected to any uh, crm system and we have a pl uh, plug in mechanism which connects to any system within 30 minutes which ensures that we are connected with uh, all the and can be connected to any player who wants to sell their uh, i mean to sell their products through this distribution network and finally we have connected to a lending platforms and multiple other service systems for the retailer as well so what this means is that there is a end to end operating system which is built all the way from the farmers the processors warehouses distribution network and to the retailers as well as built on top of consumer insights which are modular but at the same time ensures that the information flows through instantaneously seamlessly through each of these players ensuring that planning is optimal and there is complete transparency in the system which has resulted in us having a wastage of less than 1% but while having a fill rate of close to 98% compared to the 25 to 30% uh, in this whole market uh, so what we built in each of these therefore is just not just a digital platform but also a number of ai ml enabled decision engines and an expanded set of services with a peripheral ecosystem also being built in 
So just to give an example for the farmers, we have the entire, as uh, so I spoke about, not just the advisory, but your supplies tracking mechanism. So all the way to connect uh, your planning of your uh, crops to growing them and the harvesting being connected to the market. Uh, the AIML engine plays a vital role in both your yield maximization as well as the crop calendar planning so as to ensure that the supply is in line with the end demand. And this is and this uh, ecosystem has been connected to multiple seeds and inputs uh, players as well to ensure that it, uh, the practices followed by the farmers are in line with the packages of practices which we have provided. Similarly, on the processing and the warehouse automation, uh, not only is the shop floor automated for ensuring that there's minimum physical touch, but also ensures that there is digital quality grading as well as order uh, supply and demand matching to ensure that uh, uh, all supplies which come into the warehouses leave within a couple of hours to the, end, uh, to the retailers uh, without too much of work happening through human beings into the, in the warehouses itself. Similarly, on the distribution uh, side, not only is there uh, automation for the sales force to optimize and uh, help them with the right merchandising support for the retailers who are purchasing the products, but you have the delivery optimization as well as the entire route planning and credit analytics, as well as the digital lending platform for the entire distribution network to ensure that the, uh, the end, uh, both the distribution network as well as the end retailers are able to optimize in terms of and support the end consumer needs in a very seamless and frictionless uh, manner. So this tech stack is helping us, as I said, it's a operating build an operating system across multiple direct and indirect ecosystem players. So direct ecosystem players I've spoken about are your farmers, your processors, warehouses, and retailers. The indirect ecosystem is all the ecosystem of players in your smart farming or precision farming into your seeds and inputs as well as rural lending and insurance on the farm side. On the uh, processing side, it's with the warehouse automation systems and the uh, robotics players with MSME lending uh, partners with contract manufacturing farm partners because anybody can plug into the system and based on the plan and requirements through the supply chain are able to contribute whether it's through money, money or inf uh, material money or information. Similarly, on the distribution network, you have the logistics partners, franchisee partners, and so on. And finally, for the end consumers, you have a digital lending partners also been coming in. So this is an eco uh, operating system which has four direct uh, uh, partners uh, who are core to the ecosystem and at least another 10 different kinds of stakeholders, uh, whether it's related to material, uh, whether it's related to money or information, who are part of the, who can easily plug into this ecosystem and help us serve all the primary players in uh, improving their incomes, having a more planned and therefore efficient running of the business. And most importantly, going back to our original vision of reducing food wastage in the system, which is what we've set out to do and which we have built to a great extent. So, I mean, uh, I will pause here and uh, I mean, uh, happy to take any questions and uh, deep dive on any of the elements if um, as the questions might be. Thank you.